Welcome back to Stretford Paddock Highlights. A matter of weeks after their last encounter, Paddock face off against Winsford Town once more in a match with significant implications for Paddock's promotion aspirations. <laughs> the stakes couldn't be any higher for Paddock as they prepare to host Winsford at Open Shaw. After securing an important away victory, they now face a must-win situation at home. Anything less than three points could kill off any chance at promotion. Does everyone know what to expect from these lot? Yeah. I think the majority of you in the room actually played in the last game, right? Yeah. You know the shape that they play, and you know the way that they're going to line it up. Really fucking push them, work the bollocks off them. We've got a really fucking strong bench today, lads. Work the fucking bollocks off them. Make them run, make them sweat, make them breathe. Don't give them chance to fucking catch the breath. Really fucking put it on them. This is that way you think, how can I affect the game? <coughs> and that might be by fucking keeping hold of the ball. <coughs> and that might be by being, being brave and trying to break a fucking line when you've got to say pass on. And that might be, be digging out that little bit fucking extra to work hard because you're going to have to work hard without the ball today. That's what's going to determine whether we come in here with three points and rip the roof off a fucker or if we come in here without any fucking points and sit here all fucking miserable. Every single one of you like, in this room has spoke to me and said you want to win the league, haven't you? Mm -hmm. Every single one of you. Does every single one of you believe that you're fucking capable of winning the league? Yeah. You've beaten this lot before. We're just going to do it again. Let's fucking go, lads. Welcome then to today's game between Stretford Paddock and Winsford Town here at Openshaw in Manchester. Team lineup. It's a similar sort of team you've seen for a little while. Omar, Otsi, Michael and Mike as you back forward, Mason in goal, Joe, Zach, Nosa midfield and then Ronnie, Joa and Ryan up top with a subs bench of Akira, Janeiro, Callum Walsh, Gav Salmon and Daryl Kanyemba. There goes the kickoff then, Winsford underway, lofted ball forward out to the right wing, Ronnie straight in on the press, Joe comes forward, again high ball coming over. Claims the handball there. It seemed like it was a chest there from Omar. Zach nicely back to Oatsy. Ball across the floor. Again, Paddock seems to play better when the ball's on the floor. Ball to Nosa there. Gets past his man. Bit of the one-two. Nosa on the ball again now. Ball drifts forward. It's a bit wasteful trying to find Ryan. But again, Ryan intense on the press there. Runs down the goalkeeper. Ball out from the back there by Mikey. Straight into midfield. One back by the Winsford defence and bumped on. Ronnie comes into it now. See what he can do with it. Ball through the middle. Finds no. Doesn't quite find no. So loses his foot in a little bit. Now Winsford are back in possession. Another high ball over the top. Playing it over Mikey. He's missed his man. Can the cross come in? Here comes the ball. And it's just wide near post. Nothing to worry about there for Mason Taylor. Paddock corner, arms in the air from Nosa, so you can drift it too. Comes in deep, ooh, and Lucky nearly finds Ryan Katumba. Keeper's nowhere to be seen. Zach doesn't win the ball back though, and the ref, is he called on ball? Okay, free kicks back then. Omar banged one of these in the last match. Can he repeat the magic? Oh, straight into the Winsford wall. Ball's out to Joe. Number seven straight on his back. Plays it backwards to Michael. Manages to scuff his way through a bit. It's bobbling around a bit though. Zach having to come in and clean up. Ball goes all the way back to keeper Mason. Back out to the captain now. Oatsy, who can he find? He's played it short to Zach. Now back out to Michael. And that is out of play, unfortunately. Winsford on the ball here. Nosa coming in for the press. Ryan holding position. Ryan drifting into press as well. Winsford getting themselves out of trouble though. It's been a lively first 10, 11 minutes. Winsford looking slightly better. They're loving these long balls. Oh, shit. Well, that's awful. 
That is just calamitous from Paddock. An easy, gifted 1-0 there. Ball over the top. I don't... Let's watch the replay on this one. Huge hoof from the defender at the back. Drifts it in over the top of Oatsy. He's leaving it. Mason Taylor's come for it. And then just... They've, it's a communication issue, surely. But the strikers had a perfectly easy time of that one. Both player and keeper. <laughs> both just left it alone. And that's 1-0 to Winsford. See if Paddock can bounce back now. Beat him before, can beat him again. Nose has lost the ball there. Mikey, again, can't push in. Players drifting through. Somehow still on the ball. Paddock get rid. No, yes. Good save by Mason Taylor. Ronnie's received it. Manley's back, though, with the calls there. Oh, he's kicked his heels out for a start there. Free kick to the Paddock. Let's see it to Michael. Hoofed ball forward. Let's see if you can find. Doesn't quite find Ryan. Can Joe bring it down? Let's find its way to Nosak. Man on his back. Gets rid of it. Back to Zach. Back to Joe. Bit of control here from Paddock now. It's looking nice. Running out wide. We saw him punishing a lot last game up that side. He's drifting in a lot though. No on the ball now. It's found him. Through to Ryan Katumba. Can he shoot? Oh, good save by the keeper. Kept low. Ryan tried to dink it over him. Joe looking for a deep cross again. Ooh, just behind the net. It's the right idea though. Paddock looking, uh, looking a little bit sharper now. Joe in acres of space. Ball out to Ronnie wide. Let's see if Ronnie can drive his play. It looks like he wants to cut in. He's already beat his man. And again. Oh, just not quite. It's the right idea. And I wonder if maybe he should stay a bit wider. Draw people further out the way. Buy some time in the box. Because Ryan Katumba gets that yard. He's banging in a goal. But you can't blame Ronnie for wanting to get it. Calls round ball against Joe there. He's lost his man though. Won it back. Cross comes in. Ah. And it's 2-0 to Winsford. Uh, it's one of those afternoons so far. One or down 15, two down after 30. You see Joa scraps his man, loses it. Ball gets crossed in. Mikey's ducked it. It's gone straight over Michael. Oates has been beaten in the air. And it's nodded in past keeper Mason. Soft. It's a bit unlucky from Joa. Poor from Mikey to duck out the challenge. So Joe's been pressed on straight away now. Paddock are in danger here. Two down already. There's a lot of ball watching. Michael just watched that one drift past. Joe are chasing back. Good effort here. Cross coming in. Keeper blocked it. Out to Omar. Can he find Ronnie on the side? He's driving through. Left back on a mission here. Now he plays it back to Ronnie who's safely and sensibly held back. Quick throw in from Omar to Otsi. Back to Omar. Joe in the middle now. Ball across the floor to Nosa. Doesn't find him. Or oh, it's robbed off his feet. It's hard to see. Another ball again over the top of Mikey. Seems to be targeting both Paddock fullbacks. Mikey's been beaten. It's cut back now. Passak. And it's 3 0 Winsford. Unmarked back post. Easy tap in for Winsford. And it's all falling apart here for the Paddock. Let's watch this now. Lofted ball over. Well over Mike Teddy. He hasn't seen the man over him. He's gone on his outside. Let him turn back on his inside. Lost the physical battle. Ball comes back to the edge of the box. And you can see there. Omar's pushed forward with the man. Leaving Oatsy. Marking nobody. And a back post tapping. 3 0 to Winsford now. At this point, I think the lads just want to hold out till half time. No set on the ball. Plays that way to show it. See if Paddock can actually maybe even do something. Get a goal back here. Consolation. Beautiful ball through now. Oh, just doesn't quite find Joe. Plays that wide again though. Ronnie on the ball now. Two players coming to him. Takes one. Stays wide this time. Gets the cross. Bobbles into the box. Bundled. Oh. Joe takes a shot, but the ref has blown the whistle. Called a foul against Joe. And driven ball from defence through to midfield. Number 12 riding off out to here. Good pressing, though. Ball down the wing. It's Mikey's man, though. Joe are tracking back. Ball's gone past. 
Michael on him. Stood him up a bit. There you go. Corner ball. Three minutes till half time. Winston corner comes in. It's bobbled. It's not been cleared properly. Hooked back in. And wow. 4 0 to Winston Town. This is uh, becoming a bit of a rout here. Good ball in. Doesn't get dealt with. Oatsy gets ahead and it plays it back wide. You see there. Bit of the scorpion y back kick coming in and it just scrambles around. It's poor defending from Paddock. Which is disappointing, really, because otherwise, you know, attacking wise, they've been just as uh, much of a threat, really, as Winsford. Just haven't quite put their chances away compared to them. And you think about it, four goals against them. But how many of those are mistakes? Easily three, if not all four goals, were very preventable. Joe battling the way here, though. It's been done, though, on the outside. It's <laughs> a place I'll say it's five. Zach with the clearance finds Ronnie. Plays back to Omar. Holding position. The ref might blow for half time in second out of <laughs> pity here. Back to Mason in goal. Short to Oatsy. And there is the half time whistle. So I imagine we're going to hear from the manager now. I'm going to tell you something that you already know. That was not good enough, right? I know you're thinking, didn't hear wear that, but I didn't to say it, okay? And I think you know that that wasn't fucking good enough. So I'm going to make three changes. We're going to switch up the formation, and it is kitchen fucking sink time. There's some players who deserve to come off, and there's some players who don't deserve to come off. That's just the fucking way it is. We're going to do what we can to try and get back in this fucking game. If you come off, I expect you on the fucking sidelines to dig in with your teammates, shout and fight for every fucking ball. Because that's where we've lost this game. It's fucking fight and bottle. It's just been mistakes. Here's how we're going, second half, okay? Subs is going to be Ronnie, Nosa and Zach. So it's a fucking kitchen sink formation. So now what I'm going to be seeing in this half, the game's going to be played in here. Now I think they're going to let you have the ball a little bit, which is going to benefit you a little bit to play this. Because they're going to think it's 4-0, game's fucking done and dusted. It's dangerous for them. But you have to score in the first five minutes for this one. Any fucking hope of happening. Yeah? You have to fucking come out of these blocks like you're on fucking fire. And absolutely steamroll them. Lads, like you've got to fucking leave it on the fucking ground here today. You're going to have to fucking absolutely empty yourselves. Any questions? No, no. Jay, any questions? Sad, Joe? Sad to play. Joe? Mikey, hope you happy. Mikey? Right now, it's tried in the game, man. Oh, man, you good? Going to Hey, come on. Find the ball. We strike first, yeah? Let's fucking strike them first, yeah? Come on. Are you ready to explore independence, creativity, and endless possibilities? Look to Ten Trade, the proud sponsor of Stratford Paddock FC this season. Discover their all in one trading ecosystem. Learn with 10 Academy's free online courses. Experience exceptional trading conditions. Join today to trade with confidence in FX, in commodities, and stocks. Your potential is limitless, just like the number 10. Visit 10trade.com to start your trading journey now. And don't forget to cheer for Paddock FC. Second half then. Three substitutions. Gav for Nosa, Akira for running, and Janeiro on for Zach. Kitchen sink time, says the manager. He's gone very offensive here. With so many people pushed forward, Ryan pressing onto their goalkeeper. You can see the high press there as well. Straight away, Mikey in even. Here we go. Any chance? Oh, not quite. But yeah, one of the things Stehausen has talked about previously is how good Paddock are at the, uh, the Bielsa tactic of the up, back and through. Making these spaces, the vertical pockets to play into. So it makes sense now. Full committed to Bielsa ball. Trying to draw out these pockets because Winsford uh, have defended quite deeply and then just broken with the counter and the lofted balls forward, and that has punished Paddock. Particularly Mikey at right back has suffered for these high balls. Been beaten time and again. Now, Janeiro on the ball. Tries forward. Cheeky ball through. Ryan Katumbek, can you find him? Great save from the Winsford keeper. Great effort, though, from Ryan. Okay, another sub now for Paddock. Callum on for Michael. Really is kitchen sink time now because that is an offensive winger coming on for one of these centre-backs. Paddock can't deal with it. Joe is in the face. Having to play a bit deeper now, I assume. 
based on this formation. Steve did want though, he wanted a quick turnaround if Paddock was going to do anything here. 67th minute, we are still at 4-0. Some hard running here on the side from Joa. He's pressing his man, it's tenacious. Winsford dealing with it confident low, but it's one back. Can't quite get through though, unfortunately. Just outside the post there from Gav Salmon. Paddock certainly look a bit more up for it this half. Ball comes in. Ball straight back out by Joe. Joe on the press. Janeiro chasing in two. It's a little bit spacey at the moment for Winsford. But again, this is the problem with having to cam gamble so heavily on the, uh, the attack. Prime for Paddock now. Plays out short. Callum the ball. Drifting in. Crossfield finds Oatsy. Oatsy has a something. I'd call it a shot, but it hasn't come down yet. He slipped, but it's a big ball forward. Nice from Mikey. Good on the head. Got to show that bravery. Omar on the ball. Great touch to bring it down. A bit telegraphed here from Paddock in terms of the pointing, but well ridden tackle there by Gav. Joe finds out wide to Callum. See what Callum can do here. He has got him worried. He's looked bright. Deflected ball comes through. Keeper gets to it, unfortunately. Just took the sting out of that one. I think if he got a bit more power on that one, the keeper's not stopping it. Didn't see it come in until the last second. It's three on three here. Numbers-wise, though, I mean, Mikey just about scrambling to get back off his man. But again, with Paddock's form being inconsistent lately, so too is Mikey's. It's hard to see that they're not connected. Not that he's the only player struggling, though. There's been a few people having a few off games here and there now Joa body in his man gets the ball across back post it Callum oh. there we go that's more like it Paddock get one back there's only 11 minutes to go though plus stoppage it's a consolation at the moment let's see if Paddock can get a second let's watch this now on the replay Janeiro copies exactly what Winsford had done beautiful ball up and lofted finds Joa Joa pushes past his man gets an early cross in down across the box back post for Callum it's a strange finish. Scuffs it into the floor a little bit. Hopefully deliberately. Because that would be far more impressive. But he bobbles it into the floor. Bounces it over the keeper. And it is 4-1. Camera operators complaining on the sidelines. Had it winning the ball back though. See what Akira can do. Ooh. Test the keeper from range. The keeper comes out. Stop Ryan. Wins the throw. Beats De Niro. Steps in and beats Joe as well. Lots of space here. Need to step in. Joe's drifting out to right back while Mikey's covering in the centre. Got to hold up your man here. Ball comes short. Dinked back into back post. And luckily for Omar. Easily dealt with. But again, a little bit of ball watching going on. A little bit of slow reactions. So we enter in the last five minutes almost. Janeiro, great through ball down the wing to Callum. Dancing through, cuts back in. Oh, just can't finish it. Deserved a goal though. Great bit of footwork to cut in and to weave back out. Final substitution then. Daryl Kanyemba coming on for Joa. The upside is you can hear the paddock comms now. A lot more communicative. And the break's on for Winsford. Good save by Mason. is near post. Good pressing and tracking from Janeiro though as well. Obviously uh, more of an attacking midfielder. He's doing his good defensive work today as well. Putting in the shift. Refs on play on. Okay. Dink ball comes in. Ah, oh, it's Again, it's too easy for Winsford on the attack. He's not the tallest man, that number 12. And yet he's won the ball in the air again. Now, ball through for number eight. Number seven drifting deep, trying to run round. Akira's been penalised. He did run his man into the ground, but you know what? Bit of strength, never hurt anyone. Is he getting booked for this, though? Uh, yes. Well, Akira, yellow card, 90th minute. Is that going to be Sinbin with it? 
Or is that just going to be carry on? Dying seconds now then. Mikey trying to drift the ball out wide. It somehow finds its way to Callum. Back in the box again. It's a heavy challenge. He rides it. A call for penalty, but... It's a tough one on the replay. Seemed like it was a fair challenge. First one was a little bit cheeky on the edge of the box. Second one. And there we have it. So, full-time, Stretford Paddock losing at home 4-1 to Winsford. It leaves Paddock three points short with a game in hand of Lim Rovers, though, in fourth. For now, let's take it back to the manager and the players and get a bit of the post-match reaction. Here's what it is. Yeah. Not, not a lot you can do. Not happy, obviously. Um, I imagine the lads aren't happy with their collective performance. I don't think there was any individual that stood out in a negative sense. Um, I think some of the subs at half-time were probably unlucky to be hooked, but I needed to change the shape. I needed to do things that I wanted to do at half-time. Um, the formation looked all right in the second half. Um, combination of having the game to chase, but also you have to take into account that the opposition are always going to mentally give you the ball a little bit in those sort of circumstances. I don't, people, you know, people have just, some of the fans and that have been saying, oh, we, we put it on them in the second half. And we did, we absolutely did, but the opposition played a part in that as well because naturally you're always gonna sit back and defend that four nil because you can think the game's done at four. Um, ultimately it was, wasn't it? Because we only got one back. I think if we have scored in the first five minutes of the second half and got a second, that would have been a long time for us to, to push and I think mentally that might have been a bit achievable for us but ultimately it wasn't to be. Um, I don't think we were outplayed, I thought we played some sensational football in the second half. Um, but mistakes have cost us, we have to be better with the, the individual errors. We have to look at why do we concede and is it a tactical thing or is, is it down to individual errors? Um, and the first thing I always do is, well, did I get the tactics right today? And I think I did. Um, and people are going, well, you just lost 4-1, how can you get the tactics right? Well, it's a very simplistic way to look at football, but that is how a lot of people analyse the game. You know, I think games hinge on moments and it isn't necessarily tactical. It's, it's what individuals are doing. Ryan has an opportunity to score, it hits his shoulder. I don't think Ryan intended for it to hit his shoulder, it's just hit his shoulder rather than his head. They go up the other end of the pitch, we haven't pressed the guy that we was, we identified that needed pressing. The centre half's not cleared it, the keeper's made a mistake in whether come out or not come out and end up doing nothing, which is the worst thing. It, it's better to be decisive as a keeper and do the wrong thing rather than be indecisive and essentially do nothing. And he's ended up conceding. And in the blink of an eye, you've gone from the potential of being 1-0 up to the reality of being 1-0 down. And that is how these games hinge. And it, it went the other way for us in the away game with them. We save a penalty and we eventually go on and win the game. We have a goal that goes in, which is called for offside and still dubious to this day. We momentarily switch off. We, the midfield doesn't track its men and we end up 1-0 down. Now, in that game, being 1-0 down, we had the ability and the time to be able to get ourselves level and get in front and eventually go on and win the game. And I think if we'd have played for 10 more minutes, we'd have scored two or three more goals. The difference today was that we made another mistake and then we made another mistake. And if we'd have gone in at half-time with two goals, I actually think we'd have come out on top in that game. But four give us far too much to do. So we switched it up. We went to a formation that... I wanted to try in pre-season and we never really got round to doing it because I didn't get the right people in the right places at training to do it. But it's a formation that I know that this team can play. And we really put it on them. And we got people on the ball and we had the sort of territory that we wanted in the opposition half. And it just wasn't our day. Ultimately, this league has the potential to do a rejig. You know the top two are going up. And if you're in the top two, you should think you're going up. But four went up last year. So I think it's within our own interest to keep pushing as long as we can, as hard as we can, and just finish as high as we can up the table 
And if the league wants to do a rejig because people have moved on from the Prem or there's teams folded or whatever in, be in between, then what will be will be. We should be in the division above because we allowed ourselves to, to fall off towards the back end of last season and it cost us. I think one victory over one particular opponent would have actually seen us promoted because we'd have swapped places with them. So we can't make the same mistake again. We have to be ready and in the right position should the league decide that they're, they're moving more people up. We have to be in a position where we would benefit from that if that's what they decide to do. So as far as I'm concerned, the objective never changes and that's win Saturday's game. Real fan ownership, real fan input, real fan change, real fan power. 50 plus one, we can go better than that. 100 plus none. Download our app, view the free content, read about the club, that's fine. But if you want more, become a member. To vote, to go behind the scenes, to make an impact, interact with a global community around the world, influencing how we grow, where we play, club ethics and values. The more members we have, the faster we grow. Support the club, run the club, own the club. This is ours and no one will take it away. The future is in all our hands.